This week, episode 315 of Stogie Geeks, as we come to a couple more weeks and we're about to enter a new decade, Drew and I wanted to review the past cigars of the year for the decade. And towards the end, we're going to have our predictions for what is going to be the cigar of the year in 2019. Story Geeks, episode 315 starts right now. This is a Security Weekly production. Broadcasting live from G-Unit Studios in Rhode Island, it's the show where cigars burn slow, ashes fall fast, and cocktails flow steady. It's the Stogie Geek Show. Welcome everyone to the Stogie Geek Show. Joe and I are already silly. Oh yeah. yeah. Joe Josepa, a.k.a. Joe Hollywood is here with me in studio. I'm fired up. Havana Cigar Club, located in Warwick, Rhode Island. It's a great place to enjoy a drink and a cigar. Stogie Geeks listeners can find a $5 off coupon on our website by clicking the HCC logo. Confidence. Confidence isn't walking into a room with your nose in the air, thinking you're better than anyone else. It's walking into a room and not having to compare yourself to anyone in the first place. Cigars, perfected for more than 150 years. Yours to enjoy now. What's up, Stogie Geeks listeners? Joe Hosemper here, a.k.a. Joe Hollywood, a.k.a. The Italian Stallion, telling you about a little giveaway that we have going on. We've teamed up with our sponsor, J.C. Newman, this year to give back to the Stogie Geeks listener. They've been such an awesome partner so far. They've decided to give away one Diamond Crown humidor per quarter to the winner that they choose. All you got to do is... Log on to stogiegeeks.com forward slash diamond crown. Click on the enter to win button. It's really that easy. So if you're smart and you want an awesome humidor for your home collection, go to our website, stogiegeeks.com. Find that banner ad right on top. Click on it and register to win that humidor. Good luck. Welcome to Stogie Geeks episode 315. I am your host, Joe Hosempa. It's a privilege and an honor to be here. I am joined by my co-host, the little dark-haired boy from Texas, Drew. How's it going? Wonderful, Joe. Uh, it's just out here in the cigar garden today, enjoying life, enjoying the stogie. Got my drink and ready to get down with this uh, past decade to this. I am here in true Joe's epic fashion. I got my cigar and my Bloody Mary going and my coffee uh, oh, as yeah. well. Super excited uh, about today's episode we are going to have a chance to review, and, and it's amazing, when I go back and check out this list, it's like, oh, wow, yeah, 2010, you know, we, we, I, you know, uh, I remember growing up as a kid when they would have, like, countdowns of the decade in regards to music, and I've been into music and all that stuff, and and when we, we, we were discussing the topic, I'm like, oh, yeah, it, you're right, it is a decade, and you know, it, what, what's kind of funny is, like, not a lot of... Um, uh, not not a lot of people are even focusing on the fact that we're about to enter a new decade. So um, that's a great point that you brought up, and I'm super stoked that you did. And I think that this is going to be a awesome episode of reflection and rekindling, and probably some cigar searching uh, as well. But so uh, cigar aficionado, as well as other um, uh, publications, come out with the 
top 25 of the year. Uh, and so Drew and I are going to review the top one, maybe one or two if they're interesting to us uh, for that year. And we might throw a Stogie Geeks rating uh, on that as well. First of all, I want to review the process that Scott Aficionado posts on their site. It's pretty simple. Uh, just so you know, if, if you're new to uh, cigars or cigar podcast, this will help you and point you in the right direction. Uh, what they do is they take all of the highest rating uh, scoring cigars from the past year and they assemble them uh, in uh, groups. And then they uh, don't ban the cigars. Uh, the uh, panel of judges smoke them blindly. That's step two. Uh, so they really don't know the identity of the cigar. However, sometimes if you look at the size, let's be realistic. You you know if if you look at what 2016, the the Artesian Bull, right? It's like you 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 know what that size is. If there was one of a barber pole, you would know. But again, um, they are not banded uh, there. Step three is the top uh, scoring cigars are then smoked against each other in multiple rounds, and then finally the list is assembled uh, moving forward. You know so. That's actually super cool. Um, I, I'm, I'm, I always, I'm, I remember when I was doing Cigar Club Radio, they would release them, you know, five at a time or so, and I was doing a cadence and and and, and trying to figure out like you know, which ones and doing predictions. So, uh, yeah, l l let's jump right into it. Um, right. We're, we're gonna start. Well, first of all, Drew, like 2010, like if you're gonna like, what were you doing then? Because I want the Story Geek li listener to, to kind of reflect, like, you know, like, well, in 2010, like, well, what, 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 what were you doing? Well, back in 2010, I was still in uh, San Diego, uh, just uh, working and uh, smoking stogies for sure. Uh, but, yeah, I was just hanging out. Just and I was, uh, at the time, I was, what, 30, 39? Yeah. So, yeah. So I was just hanging out, just you know, doing the career, you know, working and pretty much that's about it. I mean, I was living in San Diego. What can I say? Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> I, uh, I was rock and rolling at my ad agency with six employees pulling my hair out <laughs> for sure. Cause I had six uh -huh. employees and just, you know, uh, I remember going to a cigar shop to actually hide from my employees to get my work done. Like, you know what I mean? So, uh, cigars were, were, were always in my, in my life then as well, um, you know, in 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 yeah. meeting people in the industry and all that type of stuff. So not much has changed, I guess. Uh, no. You know, just still grinding it out and smoking some 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 good cigars and smoking some okay cigars, and and now I get a chance to talk about it. So super cool. Nice. You know? All righty, Drew, 2010. Tell us what that cigar was. Uh, let's uh, let's start cracking through this list. All right, so 2010, uh, Cigar of the Year uh, was a, a Cohiba Bahiki, uh BHK52. Mm. Uh, you know, so the Bahiki was, uh, at this, the one that won the Cigar of the Year was a uh, Petite Robusto, Robusto mm. uh, and it was a known size, it was, they would call it a Legito, uh, number four in the Cuban factories. Uh, I've had the chance to actually de uh, devour about three of these probably in the last mm, four months. Uh, leading up to this list, I kind of knew where I wanted to go towards the end of the year. What I thought that we should review was a uh, kind of a, a decade collection, just kind of talk about those past cigars while everybody else is focusing on the uh, cigar of the year for this coming up, uh, uh, rounding off this year. So, uh, yeah, so this cigar, I, I uh, you know, from what I've read and talked with other uh, patrons down at the lounge, uh, this was definitely a, a cigar that has still uh, is still around, uh, kept in rotation uh, in a lot of the uh, club members where I'm at. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, my only comments about this cigar is had it uh, super cool. Uh, it's pretty expensive, you know. Mm -hmm. it, it does come with a bit of price tag, I believe. It's around what seventy ish. It's 70, around, yeah. Is yeah, this, it yeah. can go from. Uh, it can go between uh, sixty five and sure. eighty five. Yeah, uh, here in Texas, they're about seventy bucks. Yeah, yeah. So you know, it, it's got a price tag to it. Um, it's it's a good smoke uh, for sure. Uh, I I wouldn't give it a a, a, a a super high rating from a Stoy Geeks rating perspective. I would definitely, you know, I'd I'd give it I'd give it a 
a box split if you want to swing that, you know, um, m maybe even a fiver ju just because of the price point. Uh, I do want to make note that this is one of the most counterfeited cigars still. So yes. if you do traveling and you go out and, and, and whatnot, and it's amazing, uh, at least now about two, three times a year when I'm in a cigar shop, someone comes up to me and they were gifted this cigar and they're like, you know, you think it's real? And, 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 and you know, it's, it's some of them you can really tell. And, yep. you know, I'm like, is this your only one? Because I'll smoke it for you and let you know if I thought it was real or not. You know, <laughs> but, yeah. So, uh, ironically, yeah, the number two cigar that year in 2010 was the Viaje Res Reserva number no. five, which mm -hmm. um, if you're me, I, 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 that, I love that cigar still. You know, if oh, you yeah. can get your hands on that one, you know, and, and, and stuff like that. I'm such a fan of, of, of Viaje for sure. Yeah, and the Cohiba, I was going to say, since my 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 moniker is uh, the band man, always look at that band, check it out, take a look at it. You know, there's ways to inspect that band. Um, if you go online and, you know, there's a lot of things about spotting fake Cohibas. Mm -hmm. uh, you de you definitely just look at the band, just 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 look at it real quick. You'll you'll find the the errors or the uh, omits, you know, on the fake ones for sure. So I've seen I've seen them. Uh, I've held them. I've looked at them and I'm like, oh, okay. So educate yourself definitely when you're uh, if you come across these cigars. Yeah. Uh, especially if they're gonna be charging you a premium price of sixty five or I don't care if it's over twenty bucks. <laughs> yep. Yep. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. And you know, uh, not every cigar is gonna be counterfeited if there's number one cigar, but Cohibas are notoriously yes. counterfeited, especially if you go into tourist traps and 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 you know travel overseas and get Cubans and stuff like that, you know, just letting the consumer beware. Um, also, quick note, uh, 2019 smokes are coming out um, uh, 11 through, uh, uh, I'll get to that. The uh, <laughs> In two days, 15 hours, and 39 minutes, the cigars will start to be released. That was the point of, yeah. me, of me making that uh, no, notation over there. Awesome. Uh, 2011 was the Alec Bradley Prasado Churchill. Yeah. Number two was the La Roma de Cuba Mia Moore Bellicoso. I just want to go and say, moving forward with this list, I'm always shocked at what is number one. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, if you're listening at home and you're not watching and you can't see my facial expressions, I'm always I'm always shocked that like every year I'm like, that's the number one cigar, really? Because like three, four, five are really good cigars, too, you know, and 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 that conversation always continues throughout the shop to at least April, May of the year, you know, for sure. Yeah. So the Presidio, I mean, I'm, I'm sorry, the Alec Bradley. uh Pr Prensado Churchill. I mean, I've had it. You know, uh, I'm, I, I'm. When it comes to Alec Bradley, I've made my point across the original Tempest blend. There you go. Maybe, yeah. maybe the um the filthy hooligan. When it comes out once a year, I like the Candela yeah. Barber Pole. It's really a black market with the Candela Barber Pole. But you know, again, uh, when 2011 was up, I'm like, really? That's pretty sharp because I absolutely positively love the number two smoke. The La Roma de Cuba Mia Moore Bellicoso. In fact, I probably, if I were to rate that today on a Story Geek show, I'd probably give it a box split because I at least have at least ten or fifteen of them a year for sure. Still, yeah, I I rated this one a fiver for sure because, well, one, I can't get them over here as uh, as much as I when I went and searched them out on the East Coast and the West Coast. Uh, but yeah, I gave it a fiver. Uh, I've actually got my hands on two, and that's that's it. Yep. Um, yeah, in my in my travels, and and it it almost was like a unicorn, but it really shouldn't be. But it definitely was a good cigar. Uh, the backstory on that, you know, it's uh, the tobacco was fermented, you know, through you know aging through mid two thousand eight, and then they and then they just started the process of of getting the cigar together. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah. Side note: the number four cigar that year in two thousand eleven, the Potigas Series P number two, banging, complete. Like, box, go for it. Like, it, it, you know. And if you can get it in Cuban, even better. Yeah. They're, they're available. You know, but yeah, absolutely. So, um, the Alec Bradley stick of the year, 
I, I'd, I'd probably give it a try one. You know, yeah. that's just that's just my. But it does very well in shops still. You know, which I, which which now that we're we're kind of like looking at this list, like wow, like you know, it 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 still does you know pretty good over the past eight years or so. You know, yeah. Awesome. It's, got, it, it's definitely got a good shelf life for sure. I mean, I've talked to other, other uh, uh, cigar um, uh, people down in my lounge, and they they definitely when they when they get their hands on these or when they're traveling on business, uh, this is one of the cigars they do look for because it's a good rotation cigar. And um, but like you know, like they they even told me they would do a box split on those for sure. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, anything else on twenty eleven, or are we moving on? Hmm. Let's move on. We got We're saving our discussion for 2019. That's going to take the bulk of the the bulk of the the, the bulk of the show for sure. Um, 2012, uh, Florida Las Antilles Toro again, still around, solid smoke, cigar of the year that year. Uh, number two was this is the 2012. Number two was the Cohiba. 1966 Edition Limitada, 2011. I agree. I agree with that. Spike Cohiba for sure. Uh, Romeo and Julieta was in three. Padrone Family Reserve, 85 years natural, number four. And Arturo Fluente Rosado Sun Grown Magnum R Vitola, 44. I mean, really? That should have been two or one, right? Right, <laughs> you know, and I'm only. I know I said top two. I'm not gonna. I'm gonna stretch it. It's just that it is what it is. Yeah. So let's get back to the point. Florida Las Antilles Toro. It's a solid stick. It's still around. It in in, in shops here in the Northeast. It it's still on shelves and it 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 does well. It's a no one's bargain bin from my experience at all. Yeah. No, and then, and then they they did a Maduro version of that cigar in 2016. Yes, uh, as well, and so, and I've had I've had a few of those, and and again, you know, like you said, I mean, it's it's a great cigar, it's a good rotation. I mean, this one right here was for me a box split on this particular smoke, uh, but uh, the Maduro version I, I really enjoy. I don't know if you had a chance to have those yet, Jim. Yeah, 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 and and again, if I were to rate that stick, um, either the Maduro or the natural, like I, I it would be. It's 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 box split for me for sure, yeah. you know box split. I'm not gonna cross reference some of the ratings and and that I put on Story Geeks, but you know here, uh, you know it it, it it's it's a solid stick. It's a really really solid stick for sure. Uh, that was 2012. Why don't you bring us to 2013, Drew? 2013. So it was the Monte Cristo number two. Mm. Uh, this was a uh, uh, you know a torpedo. Uh, uh, this this smoke, uh, as they say, it, it is you know it's stately smoke. I mean, I, I've had I've actually got my hands on mm, I think five or six of these. Yep. And and yeah, this this smoke definitely a, a, a lot of sweetness and a lot of these spices come through. I liked it very much, and I, I actually am got another search out to grab me some more. Um, you know, once once they come up, come, once I can find them. But, yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah, the Monte Cristo number two. What it's, was the number two cigar that year? Well, hold on. I don't have the, that. Well, yeah, no, I got it. Yep. The, the Monte Cristo number two, uh, Habana, right? So it's Cuban, yeah. right? I mean, yeah. I, yes. I, I, people ask me all the time, um, you know, what's your favorite cigar? I'm like, you know, okay, like what time of day it is? Did I eat? Did I not eat? You know, uh, how much time do I have to smoke? I'm like, oh, no, I'm not making it that complicated. But when it comes to what's your favorite Cuban, it, it's, it's, and I've said it here on the show, over the past couple of years, Monte Cristo number two, and probably like a Boulevard something or other in Potagus. Like if I were to rate them, but yeah, the Monte Cristo number two is 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 awesome, and it's yeah. a staple. Like it's it's a staple smoke. So I guess in 2013, I, I would I would agree, but the number two, the Agent Room Quattro, yeah, F55. Okay, moving on. Number three, Davidoff, Nicaragua Toro. Yes. <laughs> Give me some. Number four, probably should have been number two in my opinion. Again, if, you, if you're listening, we're on 2013. Um, number four, Padron 1964 Anniversary Series Maduro Diplomatico. Yes. <laughs> you're right. I mean, you know, I don't know. Yeah. How the heck did the aging room 
F55 beat the Padron Anniversary 64. Let me, let me tell you this question right now. If we were to go into a cigar shop across the U.S., ask people when's the last time they had a Padron, when's the last time they had an aging room, I'm going to go with Padron. 98%, yeah. you know? Again, super cool uh, to, to kind of reflect on this. And that Bahike from 2010 made the top five again. Mm. So, uh, you know, three, three years later, you got to scooch down. Out of the list that we've done so far, um, 2013 is I I agree with 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 that. You know what I mean? Like like, like I agree with with that number one smoke for right. sure. You know, definitely. Um, where are we? 14, 2014. All right, there we go. 2014, 2014. Whew, I'm trying to think where I was. Oh yeah, okay, I was on the radio. Yep. <laughs> all right. Yeah, that, okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah. All right. All right. Yep. This list all comes back to me now because now it's like I've been in it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, and, and in yeah. regards to at least talking about cigars and um, research and critique and mispronouncing names since 2014, your host, Joe Hosempa. But anyway, <laughs> um, the cigar of the year for 2014 was the Oliva V, the, the Oliva Siri V Melanio Figurado. Figurado. Still around. Still around. Still, still around and guitar. still kicking. And it's kicking well. It's kicking well. I, I The Oliva rep lives here in the north. Well, the rep lives here in the northeast. I, 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 I seem to run into to him all the time uh, here. And, you know, it, it again, the, 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 the stick does well. They have gift packs this time of year and all that stuff. So, you know, for those of you who are shopping and don't know what to get your significant other or the cigar fishing out on your list, you can't go wrong with this smoke. No, yeah, this this smoke is still around. Uh, I, at 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 our lounge, I mean, a lot of people still smoke the cigar, uh, and they and they love it. Uh, it's it's definitely you know one of the ones that they uh, I've seen a lot of the members hoard, uh, you know, in their lockers, and uh, you know every once in a while, you know, you'll get three out of the twelve people in there smoking the Milanio yep. uh, cigar for sure. Milanio, see, I mispronounced that again. What is what saying? Oh, yeah. Anyway, number two, E.P. <laughs> Carrillo, La Historia. Great smoke. E.P. Carrillo, e. Carrillo uh, L- L- the La Historia. Number three was the uh, uh, Lusione, Fum de Amor. Um, still around. It's uh, they're still around. Uh, Hoyo de Monterey, uh, Epicure uh, Special uh, Tubo, mm-hmm. number four. And number five, Rocky Patel, Royal Toro. I have to go number six and stretch it. I'll tell you they open sex. Really? Really? Like, uh. <laughs> really? I'm like, I'm <laughs> getting heated. Right? Who the hell smokes these things? Right? Anyway. Um, they must have got the unicorn. You know, they must have got the one, one in that batch. Oh, yeah, that absolutely. Was. Yeah, 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 yeah. This wasn't you know? hidden on all notes that day or something. I'm telling you, Drew, I'm having a blast doing this show. You're, you're chilling in the Sagaden. I hear birds in the background, so that's cool. Oh, yeah. You know, I hear like, <laughs> it's awesome. You know, it's like a Zen. It's like a Zen show here at Stogie Geeks. Um, yeah, so uh, apparently the Rocky Patel Royale Toro b- beat the uh, Fuente Fuente Opus X uh, in 2014. All right. Must have been a cosmic shift or anything. And the Series V Melanio, right? That's how you pronounce it? Yes. <laughs> Melanio was <laughs> Melania. the number one was was the number one smoke of the year. What would you rate the Melanio? I would rate it uh I would definitely rate it a box. I mean, I I I, lo- I love them. I like them. And I and I do go to that probably once every other couple of weeks. Yeah. All right. That's cool. That's fair. It's a fair assessment, definitely. And, and they're and they're fourteen bucks. I mean, so the price point on that uh, that helps out as well. Uh, and it, and if you age them and store them correctly, uh, they still maintain their their uh, their uh, quality for sure. Mm. Well, we know me and aging is not happening. <laughs> yes, it let's ask not. Paul. Yeah. yeah, Paul's like, oh, I got this one from the original factory, and you know. 2011 <laughs> um 2015 why don't you announce that smoke so my father lee let 
La Beijou. I'm going to help you. La 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 Beijou. La Beijou. 1922 Torpedo Box Press. Mm. Uh, Cigar of the Year in 2015. Uh, I I haven't had a chance to get this smoke in my hands, but uh, from what I've been told from other people online, uh, this definitely uh, is one of the cigars that, that they felt that that earned this spot. I'm not. I don't. I don't know what two and three and four are. Oh, we'll, that was we'll, in front of me. We'll get there. Let me ask you this question. You you said you 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 have not had this. I've not had that stick yet. So is my father, like, no. relevant in Texas? Like, are they? Uh, no, we got. We definitely have my father's, but we have all the all the latest in all the in latest. Okay, I'm yeah, sure. To. That's that's interesting. Yeah. This yeah, cigar is still in from the Northeast, still around. Uh, I hope you're keeping tabs from all our shows of uh, what sticks I said I'm going to ship you. I'd be lying to you if I said I, I have them. I'm going to call you one day and be like, okay, today's the day we're shipping you sticks. Well, what's the list? So <clears throat> uh, you should put this list. You, know, you, you should put this stick on that list. If you haven't have a list already, you should start compiling that. That's coming up. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. So. Uh, yeah, we, it's, uh, again, I, 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 it's super high rating here. I, I would probably, I'd give it a box, box split, right? But, you know, definitely a box, box split with a friend I, is, 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 is where I stand on this. Uh, it's a great stick, you know? Uh, I find it interesting, you gotta V-cut this. Now, I know mm-hmm. it's a torpedo, so it, it might be weird, you know, some people like to guillotine that. Obviously, you you can't bullet it unless it's a really small, which which will make the draw hard. But like you know, uh, a V cut torpedo uh, or that Calibri deep cut V, super cool. It's a great stick, you know. So we'll have to put that on the list for sure. Uh, we're in 2015. That was the cigar of the year. Number two was um, the Ramon Alones Cuban. I would agree with that. Super good, you know. Yeah. Um, this came up in conversation yesterday at an event. I was next door at their event and, uh, a, a client had, you know, oh, I want to sticks online. You know, I know you do story geeks and you, you don't like that. <laughs> right. You know, he was like trying to, but he actually talked about the CAO flathead. And I was oh, like, yeah. oh, I was like red label or black label. And he's like, they have a black label. And I'm like, yeah, they have a yeah. black label came out this year at IPCPR. And yes. I'm like, uh, do you really like the flathead? He's like, yeah. I'm like, I'll give you two. <laughs> so, I, <laughs> so I ran next door back to to, to Story Geeks, grabbed them, gave it to him, and, and gave him a couple of Story Geeks stickers. And away. He's like, are you sure? I'm like, yeah, yeah, dude, take them. Like, uh, if this is your gig, go for it, man. You know? Nice. Take it. So it's a weird how that came up. But anyway, that was number three, the CAO flathead. Uh, V660 carb. Obviously, they name them after uh, with the series of, of different car pots. Car pots, yep. as we say here. Car in, in the Northeast, right? Yeah. Um, so getting back to number one, uh, that my father, yeah, totally. Um, n- number two, the Ramona Lone Lance, uh, especially uh, from uh, Cuban. Uh, three was the Flathead. Uh, four was... Arturo Fluente, Don Carlos Bellicoso. Hmm. What? You're going to tell me that <laughs> CAO, right? You're going to tell me that CAO Flathead beat the Arturo Fluente, Don Carlos Bellicoso. That's two years in a row. Uh, right, hey, you know, uh, this, uh, yeah. you know. Uh, number five, Padron Family Reserve, 50 years natural. Totally. It's, it's, it's a great smoke. Oh, yeah. Uh, and then you keep on going down. Uh, number ten sticks out in my mind. The Liga Provada number nine. God, twenty fifteen was when Ligas made awesome Ligas. Yeah. <laughs> right. I mean, you know, just my opinion. Uh, there another one that sticks out. Uh, way down on the list is the Latelier La Mission nineteen fifty nine. They got number seventeen. On that list. So now I'm stretching it, right? We're only going to do the top two. Now I'm in 17, right? <laughs> no, I'm just trying to, you know, give the story geeks a kind of lay of the land as to what came out. Because, you know, when that when that debuted, you know, and came out around those years in 2015, yeah. you know, because as the years progress, we kind of forget. At least I do. You know, we everything goes so fast, you know. It's, it's tripping, well, that's why I, it's tripping yeah, around well, the sun 
just seems to go faster yeah. and faster every year. <laughs> that's why that's why you and I, when we were talking earlier, we 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 thought this would be a great this would be a great segment, you know, to go through the cigars of the decade and lead up to 2019. So yeah. Hell yeah. You, you do, you do. It brings back, you know, it brings back muscle memory in your mind. Like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I got to get back to that. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. Uh, before we get into 2016, I want to remind the story geeks listeners to go to StogieGeeks.com And if you click on the McAuliffe cigar banner, they are looking for um, cigar ambassadors to join their team, and you can register and go through their process. If you are a cigar ambassador, your benefits, you get an ambassador coin, private Facebook group membership, uh, cigars at different uh, McAuliffe events, exclusive contest for ambassadors to go out there. You get a 25 discount on all swag items. Over there, and you get behind the scenes view of a boutique cigar company. It all starts. With, and if you ever wanted to step into the industry and you like cigars and you wanted to take a, a gamut at that, uh, I'm really super stoked that McAuliffe is bringing back the ambassador program. So if you want to do that, you go to StoryGeeks.com, click on the McAuliffe logo, and away you go with that process. If you become an ambassador, we are going to be doing a show where we interview ambassadors, and let uh, and you're going to be able to. Come in remotely uh, and or in studio if you're traveling uh, here to Rhode Island and G-Unit Studios. But you're going to be able to uh, have a panel and we're going to talk about what it's like to be an ambassador. And I'm super stoked and I think the industry needs it as well. Not only for McAuliffe Cigars, but for some of the other brands to bring back the brand ambassador program and subside from the social media influencer program. So anyway. Um, check them out, Stogie, stogiegeeks.com. Okay, uh, 2016. This one took me by surprise. I, I did a whole episode rant on this one <laughs> on the radio in 2016. So you can announce this if you want to. Yeah, I love Flor Dominica, LFD, Andalusian Bull, Cigar of the Year 2016. Mm. Uh, yeah, this also, yeah, I'm, I'm with you on that. Uh, at, at first, I was like, man. Really? I mean, it's a good cigar. It's sure. a great cigar. Actually, I I just smoked one the other morning. I did that on my cigar, my morning my morning stogie, uh, daily morning uh, morning stogie uh, post, and uh, you know it's it's a great cigar. Again, I mean, I I uh, I, I just don't I, I don't I don't know how it ended up up there, especially when I know two, three, and four probably should have been in the number one spot. Mm, yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah. You know, and, and and again, this is one of those cigars that would really stick out if you're doing a blind taste test for sure, right? Yeah. You know, but uh, 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 it it was number one. That's <laughs> of 2016. <laughs> the number two was the Rocky Patel Sun Grown Maduro Robusto. Mm-hmm. Potagus Series E number two was number three. Again, that Potagus came up. That's that's yep. it's a solid stick. It's consistent, definitely consistent through all the de- throughout that decade for sure. Number four, it, I abs- very solid. Oh yeah, yeah, absolutely. Number four, I absolutely positively love the EP Carrillo Selection Oscuro. Yeah, banging, still around. That that would have been this that that stick right there. What I would have thought would have been a number one stick. Right, right, right. And the LFD beat the number five Padron Series nineteen twenty six. Which came in at a hot number five, you know. Yep. Padron, Arturo Fluente, they're always they're they're, they're there. EP Carrillo, um, probably not so much uh, as we get like 2019, maybe. I don't know. I don't know. There's a lot of there's a lot of talk about what is that? The encore. Yeah, the encore. Yeah, yes. but we got to save that to 2019 segment. We're getting there. We're almost there, right? We we are in 2016. Um, the Another one, that the uh, Oliva V, the Oliva Siri V Milanio came in at number eight that year. Uh, Hoyo de Monterey, uh, Cuban, Epicure number two. Yeah. That's, that's, it's a light Cuban. I've had them. Yeah. You know, super, it's, it's a pretty solid stick. Uh, the Punch Grand Toro Santa Rita came in at number 10 that year. Sticks that, uh, came out 
uh, that really stick out for me that year, 2016. Um, number 11, Casa Fernandez, Miami. Organizer uh, Leaf with the Leaf. M- yep. Uh, the Maduro. Casa Turin, 1901, was number 12. Uh, Agent Room, Small Batch, came in at 14. Number 17 was The Brick House, J.C. Newman. Mm. Yeah, you know. So I don't know. I, I don't know. Good. That was a was an interesting year, um, for sure. Uh, I, I, uh, I, you know, I, I really liked that year, the uh, EP Carrillo Selection Oscuro, for sure. Yeah, definitely. That should have been number one. Like <laughs> <laughs> Guess there wasn't enough people. You know. Oh yeah. Guess there wasn't enough people to, 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 to hike that up. You know, um, yeah, they're good. No, I was gonna say their palate at that point probably was overworked. Mm, yeah, yeah, absolutely. 2017, you want to introduce it? I love it. Go for it, Joe. That's all you, Arturo hey, Fluente, finally. Don Carlos, Eye of the Shock, number one stick. I remember I was talking about this on Story Geeks. 2017, I was here. Are we on 20? Yeah, we're on 20. Yeah, I remember this now. So, uh, yeah, I'll tell you the Don Carlos, Eye of the Shock. Awesome stick. Goes great with a Bloody Mary. Yeah. If you're. Put, check, <laughs> put a check mark on that to send me that cigar because I haven't had that one either. That's going to take some searching. But I, I can, I can, I can, I can, I can find it, I think, I hope. Yeah. I've, I've got a search yeah. party out for that one. Oh, you do? Okay, yeah, yeah. Make sure I you do. keep a list because I wanna, I wanna, I wanna fulfill that. I don't like keep saying, "Oh yeah, yeah, yeah." I've been saying for three months. We're gonna ship you some cigars. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. Uh, number two was the Padron Series nineteen twenty six. Number two, solid one and two there. Yeah, you know. Uh, number three, Oliva Serie V Bellicoso. Wow. Number four, Cuban Boulevard, Bellicoso Fino. Number five, Alec Bradley Tempest. Alec Bradley on Tempest. Mm, not the original one. Just FYI. We're in 2017. I'll put that on my note. Okay. That was top five. Um, Yeah, yeah, top five. Alec Bradley Tempest came in. Um... Ashton Symmetry, Bellicoso, number six. It's cool. My Father, the Judge. Those are still around. Those are yes, still my, around kicking. My Father, my Judge. I actually have a box of those. So, uh, yeah, that, that cigar, I, I love that cigar. That's why I bought the box because that cigar is is definitely a good uh, cigar to age and to enjoy pretty much any time you want during the day when it yeah, when it comes in that rotation. Yeah, it's got a reasonably priced uh, as well. Stick that right. stick a stick that sticks out. I try saying that ten times, right? The Placencia <laughs> Alma Forte. Alma Forte. Yeah, number nine that came in. Um, another one that sticks out the uh, New World Toro Special by AJ Fernandez. That was number twelve. Hmm. You know. Um, yeah, it, it was, and and you got some Romeo and Juliet is in there. Fifteen, Rocky Patel is sixteen. You know, Villaga, uh, came in at number ten. Yeah. So, you know, but I, I agree. Uh, Arturo Fluente, Don Carlos, Eye of the Shock. Uh, it's funny that we're going through this list because I might change my prediction that I told you offline. <laughs> <laughs> now that I'm like seeing them all like at once, you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, haven't cracked the code yet, but boy, I can't wait to get there. Um, well, that's what that's what this discussion does. I mean, it opens up, yeah. You know, you know, muscle memory again, and 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 you start to you start to go through this list, and you're especially uh, the extended list you have there. Uh, I wasn't intelligent enough to put that down here on my side, but uh, yeah, definitely. Yeah, it that's okay. It conjures, up, it conjures up a good a good memory of those sticks, and and then you go back and go, okay, that 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 one definitely got to put it back in that in, on that list uh, and revisit that cigar again. It adds to the dynamic of the show. You're sitting in the Zen Garden, you relax. Oh, I'll yeah. sit here behind this super cool uh, 
microphone set up and get pumped up and pissed at what was number <laughs> one and two. <laughs> Ying and yang, Drew. Ying and yang. Uh, That's right. That was 2017. So that was a pretty solid year. Um, that Eye of the Shock by Al- by Don Carlos, Alto Fluente, I would absolutely positively give that box worthy uh, all day for sure. If you if you want to go for it, I mean, you can really treat treat yourself and enjoy uh, that for sure. All right, Drew, 2018, and then the long-awaited list 2019 comes up. All right, so 2018, finally, EP Carrillo, uh, Encore Majestic. It was Cigar of the Year in 2018. Uh, I've, I've had this stick many, numerous times, and it definitely, to me, uh, you know, 96 rating, I'm not sure, maybe back then. Uh, for me, it's probably in the 90s, uh, low, low 90. But, uh, and I'm just, again, it's just the sticks that I've had. Um, but, yeah, uh, that is the 2018 Stick of the Year. Mm. What do you think of that stick, Joe? Um, I, I I give it a fiver. I give it a fiver. There the, there are some other stuff from yeah. uh, EP Creel that I'm really into a little bit more. Uh, yeah. for example, his small batch stuff, 2015, 2017, 2013, the small batch EP Creel. Um, I box split this with a guy at my shop, uh, recently. Um, so 1150 a box. I mean, I mean 1150 a, a stick. Uh. Generally, it's what it runs for uh, throughout the United States. So that was a pretty decent you yeah. know, little uh, split I did with somebody at my lounge. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, you know, 2018 stick of the year. I don't know. I, I Judging on the list, and then we can jump back to that. Uh, yeah. Number three was the uh, Eluense Wise Man, Wise Man Maduro Robusto. Yeah. If I have choice between the two, I'm going with with the number three. Yeah, L U N C. You know that's super super great stick. You know, um, it's 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 more suited to my pilot. Uh, number four, uh, Padron Family Reserve number forty four Natural. Sure, mm-hmm. absolutely. Um, number five is uh, H Upman Sir Winston Cuban. Sure. We can go. Um, number six, Arturo Fluente Hemingway. Work yeah, of art. I got, yeah. You know, I've had those. Classic. Yeah. Very classic cigar. Mm. I've got four of them in my humidor now. Uh, yeah, I, I enjoy that. I definitely enjoy this cigar as well. I mean, it's, it's uh, like I said, it's, it's definitely a classic tobacco uh, uh, aroma. Uh, and again, good anytime. Uh, you don't have to wait for anything. Uh, spectacular in life to happen, but uh, yeah, definitely, I agree with that. Mm. Um, number eight was the uh, Oliva Siri V Milanio Churchill mm. again, still around, you know, but then again, we're in 2018, but yeah, um, I love how it shows the progression. Like, if you look at it from a, 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 a decade perspective. And yeah. you know they were up there, then they, but they still kind of hang in the top ten or so. Um, yeah, number nine was the Alec Bradley Black Market Esteli Torpedo. Yeah. Uh, number ten, Monte Cristo Nicaragua Series Robusto. That's a great stick. <laughs> <laughs> it's a really great stick. Sticks that stick out. Uh, number 13, La Flora Dominicana, double Leggero, uh, chisel. Yeah. That's one of my, that's one of my, my all time, uh, favorite sticks to go to, uh, along with Neanderthal, because I just love the, uh, nicotine that's in those sticks. I mean, as far as the Leggero goes, uh, but I definitely have those in my regular rotation. Yep. Um, number 16, I think is, is a really great stick. With a super high rating uh, from me uh, there. The Hoya de Nicaragua Atanio Grand Reserva Robusto Grand. You had that? Hoya de Nicaragua? I've had, yeah. I've had, I've had two of those sticks yeah. uh, earlier this year, but not haven't had any recently. I'm going to have to put that on my revisit stick list. Yep. Number 17, McAuliffe Reserva Limitada. 
You know, I'm just yeah. getting into the McAuliffe stuff. It's uh, yeah. interesting, interesting blends for sure. Um, yeah, so last year when the Encore came up, I don't know. I, I Like I said, that uh, El Uense or the Wise Man Maduro Robusto or the Padron Family Reserve number 44, uh, yeah. you know, three and four respectively, awesome sticks um, there. Um, you know, Ernesto makes some great sticks. Uh, for sure, but like I said, I, I like some of his small batch stuff. Like EP Creole comes up with that, and and like I've literally shoveled through boxes of those. Being here on Stogie Geeks when I was just reporting once a week in 2017, yeah. and in 2018, I mean we've 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 shoveled through a lot of those. And and Paul is is a big fan of the EP Carrillo, uh New Wave Connecticut as well. I. It, it's it's a little bit um, softer on my palate, but there are some days I come in, and you know I want that um, that kind of mild sweetness there, and I he has those readily available in his humidor, and I usually grab a couple and 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 have them you know f- uh, pretty frequently, but but he's he's all over those still. Um, yeah. So, you know, but yeah. So the encore, majestic was the number one stick of the year for 2018. Which now brings us to now pivot and talk about uh, 2019, Drew. Just so you know, Story Geeks listeners, you have two days, 15 hours, and five minutes to wait till the 2019 sticks um, get released. Yeah. And they're going to release them um, throughout December 16th, 17th, 18th, 19th, and 20th. So we'll be able to um, figure that out. And the Cigar of the Year will be released on December 19th. Going back, December 16th, Cigars uh, 8, 9, and 10. December 17th, 5, 6, 7. December 18th, 2, 3, 4. 19th, Sticks of the Year. And then on the 20th will be 11 through 25. Oh, yeah. So that that's going to be coming. I'm sure if you stay close to social media, you will be... Catching all the gossip, especially in some of the the groups where people post stuff, and you know, I like to see some of the yeah. some of the comments. Pe- people get rowdy. I can't believe yeah. that's the stick. So let's take some time to talk about. <laughs> let's let's take you know the, let let's take the remaining time we have to um, kind of talk about like like 2019. What stuck out for you? Um, whether you think it'll make the list or not. Uh, and what do you think if we could put together a list, um, what do you, who, who do you think is going to play in there? And are you going to keep notes of these lists so we can come back and reflect or, or do I have to write these down? No, I'm keeping a note on these lists. Cause, Thanks, Drew. I mean, yeah, because the contenders for 2019 are, are very strong contenders. The first one that, uh, that I wanted to get into was, uh, Elma, uh, the Placencia, Elma del Fuego, uh, mm, Flama. Yeah. So that's, a, uh, you know that's up there that's been talked about on all the uh different uh magazines out there uh and talked about in all, a lot of the cigar lounges that i've visited in the last uh few months and it's definitely up there to be a strong contender yep yep so you are you're all right uh uh if if, if we're if we're pivoting now to strong contenders i am going to throw into the mix i am going to throw into the um uh, not by choice, just by momentum. Alec Bradley gatekeeper, mm. because you know if if we were betting, right? If we're the, this is not by choice, I will give you my choice. <laughs> but if we're gonna get into what what we think is gonna be in the mix, I think the Alec Bradley gatekeeper should be in that mix, at least top twenty five for sure. Right. Uh, another one. I agree with you on that. Another one. I think that would play is the Alandinos. So Alandinos. Uh, the way the box came out, it's in a super big box. The way it's on a humidor, it's like I don't know. People, I've heard different takes on the retail. Some of them say these things sell completely off the shelf and do well, and some of them say just the way it's presented in the box of it's all kind of like. You know, um, I don't know, erect the set or just the way it's all in. Uh, some people just like, yeah, okay. But, um, you know, it's not in traditional boxes with separate sizes. Uh, right. That shouldn't make a difference with, with, with blind test uh, taste testing. But I'm actually shocked that that wasn't really like a, a, a super cool player in 2018 
for sure. Mm. So I think that it might be uh, there as well. And just because uh, if we look at the sticks of the year, I think they're going from a strength profile. They're going, in my opinion, if you're an experienced smoker, w- what I dub is like barely medium as opposed to like true medium for, for a newbie or for someone who's, who's, who's getting into cigars, but barely medium laying across the line of, of, of an overall profile uh, there. So I would think that the Alandino, something or other from that would play. Did you write that down? I, I wrote that down. Cool, cool. Uh, <laughs> so we have the, your, your Placencia, and then yep. we have Alec Bradley, gatekeeper, playing. This is our prediction of who would play, not what we would vote for. Um, right. And, and, and then we have a Alandino, something or other. Uh, Captain Obvious, Altura Fluente, Don Carlos. Right, the, the, that that yeah. would go there. You have any other ones? Uh, the Cavaliers, Genevieve, uh, White Series, Lancero. Mm. Uh, Lancero. Oh yeah. Wow. Lancero. Wow. That that's a bold. That's I, I. I. It's cool, but the size, I don't know. But yeah. Yeah, I think I. I it, it's definitely a contender uh, as well. And again, I'm I'm getting this this uh, information just from talking on all the different platforms with different. Uh, cigar uh, aficionados out there and just you know this is definitely one that you know everybody that I've talked to they've actually got a box of these uh, a lot of the retailers I spoke to the brick and mortar owners these were flying off the shelf as soon as they hit the hit the ground running um, and so yeah they they feel like the uh, white series uh, Solomons and the uh, Lanceros uh, but specifically the Lanceros uh, were definitely going to be uh, a definitely high contender in that uh 2019. Okay. Do you think the CEO flathead, either the Cobb or camshaft, but the CEO flathead, the black label one would play in the, in that mix? Yeah, you know that black label. I've had, I've had that, I've had that, those uh, sticks. Uh, not really. I, I didn't put that in my wheelhouse at all. Mm-hmm. Okay. I was going name wise, like name recognition, even though it's blind. But yeah, it, it. I don't know the way it tastes on my palate. It's unique. If I were a judge and I was blind testing, it's unique enough to intrigue me. Mm-hmm. I don't, I didn't, I wouldn't give it a high rating, but right. it's enough to intrigue me if I were at least put a mock, if that was number four of the 10 I was smoking or whatever the process would go. It would intrigue me to at least to have that in the mix just because it's just a unique type of, of profile on my palate as opposed to the red label um, right. CEO, but. You know, okay. Anything else you think would kind of jump in here? Yeah, I, uh, the other one was the uh, is the. Uh, did, uh, let me get to my list here. I'm sorry. No, oh, sure. Everything went out. Uh, the La Hera. I'm not sure if I'm saying that right. La Hera, 1936 torpedo cortado. What? Uh, I didn't even heard of that. <laughs> right. So this is uh L A G A L E R A nineteen thirty six torpedo cordado. Hmm. So uh again and just talking and then just speaking with people in the industry, uh this is uh the master blend is Jose uh Blanco Polchi. Is that how you say his nickname mm-hmm. or his mm-hmm. uh so uh this cigar here, uh from what I understand it's uh typically Tap uh Tabacleria La Palma or La Palma. Yeah. Uh it is a uh Ecuadorian uh cigar, uh Dominican Republic cigar. I'm sorry, rapper Ecuadorian binder Dominican Republic, filler Dominican Republic. I know we talked about we weren't gonna get into all those details. Uh this was released in uh uh 2018, uh seven out of ten on the strength. So it's one of the ones that okay. kind of stuck out there in my mind, but yep. Uh just from talking with different, uh, uh, you know, uh, cigar fish and outdoors in the industry. Hmm. Interesting. Um, we're still on the list of what I think is going to play. Um, Diesel, hair of the dog. Hair of the dog. It's going to play. It's going to be in there. It's going to be in the top twenty-five. It's not going to be in my top twenty-five, but I think it's going to play in there. Um. Drew Estate, 
I'm gonna go with I'm gonna go with the FSG. Mm. Florida Sun Grown by Drew Estate should play. Yeah. Because they always throw some Sun Growns in there. Right? Yeah. And, you know, Drew's Liga isn't what it used to be. All right. For whatever right. reason. And I don't know. I'm 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 thinking that the that's gonna uh, really this uh, I'm interested if that's gonna be in, in, in top twenty five. Um you have anything else? What about the lim- uh liberation by Hamlet? I don't think that that I don't see I it, I I would that's like me saying, well, you know, what do you think about the Black Label Green Hornet? Right, right. Like, why isn't Black Label in that mix? In that mix, yeah. Right. So we're we're, we're gonna get to that part, and we're gonna probably end the 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 today's episode with that, with like what we would put into the mix. But you know, I don't know. Like, I, it's you know, you know, I I I try to think like what really moves, because what really moves, and I know this from owning a cigar shop, and you got to keep in mind when when I owned a cigar shop. This was pre-social media, 56K modem days, right? Mm. Whatever was put out in Cigar Aficionado, customers would come in. So top 10. So at this time of the year, we were waiting for the top 10 for Cigar Aficionado. And we knew we had to have at least eight of those 10 on our shelves any way possible we can to get those on our shelves. Because people are going to come in, you know, uh, in, in to, to try to stick of the year. Right. Happens. Right. It still happens to this day. It's just right. now it's a lot quicker because of social media. We get instant results before we used to have to wait for the cigar aficionado publication that would come out, et cetera, et cetera. So, yeah. Um, I don't know. A couple more predictions. Do you think Gurkha would, would play at all in the. What they don't. They've been kind of kind of quiet. Yeah. They've been kind of quiet. Yeah, been, yeah, I got some people at my at my lounge that pissed off some Gurkha people. <laughs> well, <laughs> you know, <laughs> let me tell let me tell you, it's 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 funny when Gurkha uh, mm. tells one of my members on social media to uh, to shut the front door. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Um, another one I want to throw in the mix. Is a Hoyo de Monterey La Amistad. Amistad, yes, I definitely. You know, yes. I think it should be, uh, that should be in the mix. Another one that should be in the that I think is going to be in the mix. Cigar shops are going crazy here in the Northeast for it. Don't want to judge it, but a lot of people like their stuff. Is uh, HVC First Selection, um, yes. the short robusto, the edition, the Addition Broadleaf Short Robusto. Um, I think that uh, would would definitely uh, play uh, there. And if I'm going to go with uh, two more, I would go with a um, JFR yeah. Lunatic. I'm going on. A, I'm going on a whim. I'm going on a whim here. You know. But yeah. <laughs> but 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 no because. From seeing the list, some of the JFRs have been in that mix in the, of, yeah. throughout the years. They, they they haven't been above a, 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 a 10 or I know definitely a 5, right? Um, but, yeah, so, uh, yeah. Um, and my last prediction, I would say Ahoyo de Nicaragua something or other. You know, one, one, one of, no, it depends on what, what what's in the panel, right? You know, it's right. interesting. If we actually took the time out to say, okay, in December, I'm sorry, in January of 2020, these got the ratings, right, of 94, 93, 91. These got the higher ratings, or 92 and up, and we actually kept a tab of that, then our list would be more, you know, uh, in-depth. Yeah. Uh, yeah. For that, but judging from the characteristics of the kind of cigars that are in there, that that's my take. So my last one, just my, the sleeve up, uh, the ace up my sleeve is the San Latano uh, Dominican Toro, uh, AJ Fernandez uh, and uh, Jose Blanco collaboration. Uh, 
you know, this cigar, I, I've, I've had the cigar throughout the year and I, I, I can't talk, speak any more higher praises than, you know, than, than being, being the top favorite for me. Uh, and for a lot of others that I've spoken to online and on social media, but I think this one's going to be up there in the high, in the, in the top, I'm going to say in the top five, mm -hmm. that's my prediction on that. Mm. Okay. Um, I'm still throwing more into the mix. Uh, La Flora Dominicana, La Valcada. La Valcada. That's going to be a, a player. Yeah. That's going to yeah. be a player, you know, um, you want to pivot to what we think should be in there and then kind of make our prediction and round this up? Sure. All righty. What do you think should be in there? Well, I do believe that uh, uh, I know what should be in there is going to be the San Latino for sure. Uh, the other one I feel it's going to be in there uh, is going to be the La Roa 115 anniversary, anniversary uh, Robusto. Uh, you know, those, those are my first top you know, two that I think will be in there for sure. Okay. Uh, I am going with the La Flora Dominicana La Volcada. That should be top five. Uh, and I am going to go with Arturo Fluente, Don Carlos, that selection uh, from there should be top five. Okay. Um, going into this show, I was... When we, you and I talked offline for the story geeks who who are listening, I I, I was going to pick that as my number one, but I think I'm changing my mind as where I'm Tell sitting here. <laughs> Tell us. That's why I'm no 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 I I don't I'm 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 kind of like I don't know like the top like I'm trying to think of like all the momentum you know it it to me it's a guessing game right it's like because I'm always shocked every year I'm yeah. always shocked at what is the stick of the year every year. You know, um, yeah. if the La Florida Dominicana La Volcada got it, I would not be shocked. I would be like, wow, that's uh, great because that's probably the first year that I've guessed a top five and that it came in. You know what I mean? But, you know, I, I can tell you what I would love to see in there is a black label. Yeah. So guys by by a black label. Um, you know, such a fan of the brand, such a fan of the progression of the band of of the brand. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, you know, and and uh, I, I'm I'm super into their stuff for sure. Uh, shocker, that's not really in there. Uh, Pete Johnson and Ta Tatuaje are, are not in there. I mean, actually, petite, actually I have like I, I have that. Okay. I'm sorry, go ahead. No, no, a petite actually, like a petite black Lancero or the Robusto version. Like, why isn't that in there? Why? Right. Because <laughs> maybe it didn't get the rating. I don't know. You know. Yeah, there's a Pete Johnson I have in my list somewhere. I got to find it. Uh, go ahead. No. Um, just um, shattered. Uh, and I think the Mi Carita is, is going to play. Yeah, definitely Mi Carita. Yeah. Uh, I wouldn't go top five on that. I, I'd go top top 25. What about Sobre Mesa? Sobre Mesa. Um. Uh, uh, th that's an interesting point because if we were to put a hundred people in a room, and most of them would probably flock to the Sobre Mesa as opposed to the Mi Carita, um, mm -hmm. I would personally flock to the darker cigar. But yeah. you know, most um, so they like to stay in that m medium, you know, natural for sure. Yeah, you know, that's why some of the classic facings do very well year after year. Um, so the so the Tatawaii I had on my list, or that I had on the list, there was a, again, I, I, I talked to I, I talked to a lot of my people on social media, so that, and and I actually had a couple of these Tatawaii Reserva, uh, the SW Short, mm -hmm. uh, so that that was thrown around uh, by Pete Johnson uh, for Pete Johnson uh, through all the different social media platforms that I've spoken to several. Uh, people on this one and they think that 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 may end up on the list somewhere probably in the not in the top 10 but definitely for sure in the bottom mm -hmm. somewhere in that uh, top 25 mm -hmm. my stick of the year prediction monte cristo platinum series churchill mm. prediction not like what joe zemper would pick but right you know but then again if it was blind i i, I mean i i'm uh, i'm a fan you know, I think Monte Cristo, you know, it, they've uh, 
They've been around for a while, uh, clearly a while, and they're yeah. in the mix. But I would go with uh, Stick of the Year, Monte Cristo, Platinum Series, Churchill. That's my that's my official stamp. I was toggling between that and 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 the Alto Flamante Don Carlos. Don Carlos, okay, I but, can see that. You know, um, what's your top stick? What do you think? I, I'm going to stick with Latano, San Latano. I think that's going to be up there. No, that's I'm talking about the t- t- the. You, you think that'll be number one? I think it'll be number one. Like I, I, I really do. I mean, that's 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 where I'm sticking my guns to. I know I said top five, but I believe that's going to hit number one. For wow. Sure. Okay. I I know. I know. No, I I I <laughs> I, I mean, it, it, it's 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 really you know. Do you think a Cuban's going to be number one? No. Okay. I don't think. Yeah, I think Nicaraguan, uh, uh, a Dominican Republican or Dominican Republican cigar is going to be there. Uh, I, yeah, I, I think there's enough activity of what got higher ratings in 2019 to have that kind of be an afterthought. You know what I mean? Yeah. Some of the right. years that might have came. Okay, yeah, sure, but um, I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. What do you think? Well, what do you think about uh, any of the new, like my father's, the La Promisea? La Promisea. Yep. Yeah. I, that I, came I'm out this year. Sure. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that'll show up on the list for sure. Nat Sherman, uh, timeless. Forgot yeah, about Nat that. Sherman, I, Nat, Nat, Nat Sherman. Nat Sherman. Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah, Nat. Yeah, I think that'll show up definitely. In, in I'm going to be surprised if it's not in the top 15. Mm. Okay. I will be surprised if that's not in the top 15, but I believe that that's going to be in that spectrum yep. um, in, in the Cigar of the Year. Wow. Okay. What do you think about probably like like the New Worlds would, 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 would play, AJ, on some of the New World stuff? Uh, I'm not saying top one, the, but, you know, going back. Yeah. yeah. I would say I would say it would be in a, his will be in the top 10 for sure, you know, on the New Worlds. Yep. I think cigars that should be there. Jumping back, um, jumping back, uh, Osak, the one shot, one kills, should yep. be there. Um, should be there. They p- probably won't. Um, Podomo, you can't forget about Podomo. Can't yeah. count him out. You know what I mean? He, he's, he, you know, he, he, I'd go top 10 maybe. You know? So is that the Perdomo State Selection Vintage yeah. Maduro? Yeah, I would Maduro. go. Well, I don't know about the the the. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The Perdona Perdona State Selection Vintage Maduro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not gonna get in the yeah. prediction of sizes. You know who knows. Um, yeah. The La Historia by Perez and uh, Carrillo, the Encore tenth anniversary. Yeah, I came out this year. That's, that's that, I, oh man, I don't even know if I want to bump Monte Cristo number two. That might be it. <laughs> that might be it. I don't know. Oh, I'm struggling. I really am struggling. Uh yeah. Davidoff uh, with, will play. You know, Davidoff's gonna play for sure. So we did. We did. You did talk about uh, Hoya de Nicaragua Cinco de Calas. Yeah. Yeah, that one. Okay, yeah, that's that's in that list as well. Uh, where it'll land, it, it's it's uncertain. Uh, with that one being a uh, uh, Nicaraguan stick, and I'm not saying that that's that's just because it comes from Nicaragua. Uh, Nicaragua, it's it's uh, out of the contention for sure. But um, but I I I have a strong feeling this will be a strong contender in the top ten as well. Right. Right. Um, what I think should play Room One Hundred One Tenth Anniversary. Mm. You know that should play, yeah. but it's it probably won't at all. And then and then um, they have the Liga Privada Number Nine, the Corona Viva. Mm-hmm. You know, from from again, uh, just from people I've spoken to, they feel that that one's going to be in the top twenty. Um, and again, wherever that falls, it will. But. Uh, as you said, Le- Le- uh, the Liga line has subsided somewhat from talking with everybody. Everybody talks about the twenty, what fifteen, I think year. Yeah, Liga, yeah. and yeah, they 20, talk yeah. about that. And of course, we know where that. I think that gentleman left that left Drew Estates that year, right? Or was it twenty sixteen? I think it was twenty sixteen. Yeah. No, 
2017. We're talking about soccer, right? Yeah. No, no, that's 2016. Yeah. 20, time flies. Time flies. Yeah. My last prediction what could possibly play is um, the Trinidad. Hmm. Play. There, you know, top twenty-five. Should it'll be? It should be in there, definitely. Uh, which one? Um, probably the. I don't know, a Trinidad something or other, and you can't count out Vega Fina, Grand Reserve. Vega Fina. You can't yes, count. You I can't. Have. You can't count that because they they they're in the mix. You know what I mean? It's like it's crazy. You know. Um. Yeah, that's you know. I think the uh, Tatuaje Pork Tenderloin should be stick of the year um, for this year and next, <laughs> yeah. and uh, maybe the year after that. But I don't know. You know, that's the way it goes. Anything you want to add to this uh, segment, Drew? Well, you know, again, I mean, just talking about the cigars that are out there. Uh, the other ones that I didn't touch on was the. Uh, uh, I'm sorry, I'm going through my list here as we're as we're speaking. Uh, would be uh, another name that's out there that's been thrown around uh, on social media is going to be. Uh, oh man, I'm sorry, my list is uh, punch. So we talked about Cuban. So punch, uh, short to punch. Uh, that's been kicked around. Yep. You know, so that'll be one that uh, just depends where it lands. Uh, depends where it was in the in in the. Uh, you know, in the uh, segment of, uh, of being rated, you know, uh, that cigar aficionado, but uh, punch uh, short V punch uh, was one that's in there as well. Okay. I think it'll be on that list. So just to recap, you think it's going to be the San Latino. Mm-hmm. I think it's going to be the Monte Cristo Platinum. And... I wish the Viaje Skull and Bones would be up there too. <laughs> you know what I mean? I, I'm such a fan of of of, of them as well. What? Hey, just real quick. What about yeah. Oscar uh, Valadares? Oh man, yes. Man, this is like a, a never-ending list, right? Now we're like up to fifty, right? If you good started writing all this down, um, yeah. the Superfly. Yeah. That's a Superfly. Wait, wait, were you thinking Superfly or were you thinking something else? Well, uh, I had two on that one, and so just on my discussions with my with my people online, uh, they thought between Superfly and the Oscar uh, Habana winner edition. Uh, so the, it's a uh, you know Petit Corona, uh, you know that got some high praises as well. Uh, it's it's been kicked around again. Um, so it's between that and Superfly. Mm. So I think one of those two for him uh, will definitely end up on that list. Uh, it is wrapped in a candela leaf, so uh, we'll definitely see where that lands. Yeah. I just wanted to put yeah, that in your, I, I think, our listeners' mind. Yeah, sure. I, I think if it was one of the two, it would be the Superfly. But, yeah. um, you know, who knows? I mean, I, I, I mean, I wonder if they get the same judges, you know, like two years or something like that. And I don't know. It's, you know. It's blind. It's supposed to be unbanded. I'm sure it is. Um, it's just interesting on people's palates, you know, because yeah. I speak to some listeners and, you know, when, when I see them out and they're like, I can't get into some of the stuff. And of them, like, man, I've tried stuff that you've smoked. And it's, oh my God. And like, when I, when I yeah. try it with a Bloody Mary, like, you're so right. I'm like, yeah, well, you know, I, I just tell you what I like and that's the way it goes. Welcome to Story Geeks. I tell you what I like. It's awesome, you know, because yeah. it's awesome because I like one- it. It doesn't mean you have to like it. <laughs> So the other one I had on there too is the one-off Corona Gorda. Okay, uh, that was just on that list. Uh, and again, I, I you know I, I do talk to my to my uh, people that respond to me online. They felt that this cigar definitely is worthy of notation. Um, maybe in twenty twenty, who knows? Yep. Going going forward, but they definitely put that one out there. Uh, that one is uh, tobaccos de uh, via de Jalapa, uh, Nicaragua, uh, by Fumar International. Mm-hmm. So yeah, so I got that data from their website. But uh, yeah, uh, yeah, they feel that that one's going to be kicked around as well. 
Right, right. <laughs> <laughs> Winwood Hills should be in there. Mm. The the mayhem, Johnny, our producer's chiming in. The mayhem should definitely yeah. be in that mix. That's a freaking awesome stick. It is. You know, it's like an awesome stick. I, I I'm such a fan. Raul, I know you're listening. Send some sticks. Raul, we need some mayhems over here at Stogie Geeks. We need to, we need some mayhems over here uh, at at Stogie Geek. So yeah, definitely. Um. <laughs> and the one Gurkha ghost, uh, the one Gurkha that I had on this list as well was the Gurkha ghost gold shadow. Mm. Uh, you know, uh, you know, it's the group. You know, is the owner uh, PDR uh, Cigars is the factory where it's made. So that's just there. I'm. Again, I'm not putting that on the list, but that's that's definitely been kicked around as well. Okay. We could go for another hour, but we're not going to go. If you want to keep the conversation going all week long, you can uh, go to facebook.com forward slash Stogie Geeks. Let us know your prediction, or you can tag us, and, and, and um, we will have uh, our uh, awesome crew responding uh to that uh as well or you can um contact drew directly at drew at stogiegeeks.com or me joe h at stogiegeeks.com email all complaints to drew at stogiegeeks.com uh for sure drew any last words we're we're wrapping this up no no everything uh like i said you know for this you know go out there Look at these cigars, you know, look at, see what they're going to, they're going to start rolling them out on Monday. So Cigar Aficionado, I believe it's going to start rolling out their list uh, in segments, uh, starting from number 25 down to number 19, I believe it is, and then go on from there uh, throughout the week. So keep a lookout for that. Uh, yeah, let's take this, let's take this uh, conversation to Facebook or uh, Instagram or twi- Twitter, <laughs> Twitter, Twitter, and uh, yeah, let's, let's see what let's, Drew wants Let's Facebook, what... Instagram, and Twitter. I say email Drew at StoryGeeks.com or Joe H at StoryGeeks.com. Email us both. I'll hit reply all. We can have a long, yeah. super chain conversations. It would make everyone's life a lot easier if there we you do go. that. But uh, either way, also don't forget to follow Drew on uh, Facebook. He uh, posts sticks in the morning that he's enjoying in his cigar garden, his cigar garden right. over there in Texas, the little brown-haired boy from Texas. Uh, 4 a.m. <laughs> <laughs> at 4 a.m. So, yeah, so Story Geeks, we can keep the conversation going all week long. I want to remind you that behind every cigar is a story worth knowing. So get out there and support your local brick and mortar. I want to say a special thanks to J.C. Newman, Havana Cigar Club, Placentia Cigars, and McAuliffe Cigars. Story Geeks, we'll see you next time. <laughs>